One of the most popular body type searches on autodeal.com.ph is the pickup truck. And you really can't fault anybody. Why? Because it's got practicality, utility, affordableness. Is that even a term? Well, it is now. Two that are always in the top five are the Nissan Navara and the Toyota Hilux. Now, let's say you want to throttle back ever so slightly on, let's say, for example, the utility side, but you want to maximize practicality. Luckily, those two companies have automobiles just for you. You have the Toyota Fortuner, this is the limited version, and then you've got the Nissan Terra. This is the top of the line 4x4 version. Now, the difference obviously between the two of them will be a little bit of coin, but if you've ever found yourself trying to figure out which one of these particular automobiles best suits you, well then you're in luck. Perhaps sit back, relax, and allow us to take you through this Comparo to help you figure it out. Are you looking to compare prices for your brand new car? Well then, visit autodeal.com.ph, select the car that you want, and choose to request for a quote from our network of over 500 official dealer partners nationwide. Within minutes, you'll start receiving offers from the dealers you've selected. All that's left is for you to select the deal that's best for you. Get the best deal on Autodeal. Now, we've covered these two automobiles quite extensively in the past, and if you'd like to see the videos individual videos of these guys, you will find that the links are in the description down below. But this is the first time we've actually paired them together. So let's get to it. Exterior, very briefly. It's pretty much the same on both automobiles. They both have LED headlamps and fog lamps. Tail lamps in the back are LEDs as well. They span around the automobile. You have your third brake light. You've got repeaters on the side mirror, same ground clearance, and they actually both have 18-inch wheels. The difference, obviously, between the two of them is that there is more black cladding or sportiness on the Fortuner and more chrome or matureness on the Terra. The chrome spans from the front, a little bit on the side and then also at the rear. Whereas on the Fortuner, the chrome is limited to just the door handles and right underneath the window sill. I will say this though, that if you opt for the Nissan Terra, if you do get yourself the 4x4, the exterior difference of the 4x4 to the 4x2 well, it's, it's very difficult to tell which is which, apart from the badge in the rear. When you get the limited Fortuner, however, this is very different from the four other 4x2 models because the front bumper is different, the rear bumper is different, the configuration of the lights is different. So what I'm trying to express to you is that if you were to opt for the Fortuner 4x4 Limited, it looks somewhat different than all the others on the road. So there is that ever so slight exit, exit, what am I trying to say? Exclusivity of it all. I gotta get that word right every once in a while. Now, one of the major differences between the two is what lies underneath, because on the Fortuner, or rather underneath or inside, or however it is that you wanna put it, you're looking at a 2.8 liter four-cylinder turbo diesel that produces 201 horses and 500 newton meters of torque mated to a six-speed automatic transmission. Now, all that mumbo jumbo translates to roughly eight and a half kilometers per liter inside the city and about 16 on the highway. On the Terra, on the other hand, it is also a turbo diesel engine that is a four-cylinder, but it's got a lower displacement. This is only a 2.5 that produces 187 horses and 400 newton meters of torque, which is mated to a seven-speed automatic transmission. Now, that mumbo-jumbo translates to better fuel economy because it gets 10 inside the city. However, oddly enough, during our testing, it was only able to produce 15 kilometers per liter on the highway. We tried our best. This is real world. Sometimes there are smaller cars in front of you that you want to overtake at like 190 kilometers. Um, no, I meant 100 kilometers per hour. It's just that we did try our best. We're not exactly a sanctioned group of people that when it comes to 
fuel efficiency, but we, not, we tried our best. We did. We really did. So we've talked about the specifications of the engine and given you the fuel figures, but what exactly does this power feel like or how is it translated onto the road when you're driving? We'll get to that a little bit later. In fact, we'll do an even a small little uphill test on it and tell you how that feels. Before we move any further, let's start at the rear and work ourselves up front to show you the cargo space. Car go space? It's a Tesla. Now we've always used Balik Bayan boxes uh, to show you the space that is available inside the automobile and this will none be different. When you open the Terra up, no power door by the way, it is easy to say that you can easily load six Balik Bayan boxes. Now this is possible because the way that the automobile's uh, third row and second row fold is flat and flush, well, as flush as can be. So if push came to shove, you should be able to fit six Balik Bayan boxes in there. In the Fortuner, using the same size boxes, you will be able to fit a maximum of only four. That's because of the way that the third row seats are configured to fold. Instead of folding flush to the ground, they actually fold down and then up, which actually takes a lot of space. Now this, I think, has been the weakness of the Fortuner for many, many years. Uh, it still works, there's still a lot of space, but as we showed, it's just not as much as the Terra. But you do have a power rear door. Now, the third row of both automobiles is actually quite similar. Uh, great for small distances, uh, short trips inside the city, but not great for like long uh, drives. I will say, however, that the amenities inside the Terra for the third row passengers is a little bit more in the sense that it does have a port for the HDMI, which I guess is beneficiary for everybody because they have a monitor in the for the second row and the third row. And it also has a charging point for the third row. Here, you only have cup holders. So the Terra is a little up on that. In the second row, however, now that we're in the Fortuner, uh, can tell you that the thigh support here is actually very good. The bench seems like there's a fly in here. Shoe fly! The bench is angled ever so much better in here that it provides better thigh support. Leg room is pretty much the same. So is the headroom. Uh, toys back here include two 2.1 ampere charging points, which are both type A. You've got a center armrest with two cup holders that pop out like so. And then you've got bottle holders on either door. What I like about the bottle holders in here inside the Fortuner is that Jack's very large canteen actually does fit even in the rear. How about that, huh? I like that, I like that a lot. Oh, and of course, you've got air controls up on top, which control the air, which uh, there are two rows. There's one here for the second row and then one back here for the third row. Let's move to the Terra. I'm gonna bring Jack's bottle. Now inside the Terra, you can tell there's a lot more light that's coming in. Uh, but that's also because that the headliner is actually much lighter than that of the Fortuner and the fact that the windows are actually ever so slightly bigger. Not bigger though are the bottle holders found on the for the passengers here in the back. Jack's bottle will not fit properly. I can force it in, but it just won't fit properly in. Okay, now to the amenities here at the rear. Uh, sorry, not the amenities, but the seating. Um, you can tell that, although not a very tall person, I am not, uh, the seats here don't provide as much thigh support as they do in the Fortuner. But I will say that the seats inside the Terra, although not as robust as found in the Fortuner, they are much, much more comfortable and it feels like it's much more accepting. But in the Terra, the material is also much nicer. In fact, there's this quilting part right here in the center that actually feels good. And then this uh, contrast stitching. It's just very different. 
now for the toys back here. First, you've got a lot more back here. You've got uh, a screen, uh, an LCD screen that you can plug in anything that you want at the HDMI port at the back. So that's nice. Next, you have charging points here. Two charging points as well, same as the Fortuner, but here you have a Type A and a Type C. Now, whether the Type C actually charges much faster than the Type A, that I don't know. You also up on top have your air vents, much like the Fortuner. You have two for the second row and two for the third row. However, there is an additional, I guess it's very important, air is always good, an additional two air vents found here in the center. In the center too, you have an armrest, two cup holders as well. Not the cup holders don't pop out, but they're there nonetheless. And then as I mentioned, the bottle holders on either door. So a lot more toys here for the second row and the third row passengers, and just a bit more comfort when it comes to the seats, really. Uh, and then of course the, the the fact that you've got an LCD screen that you can plug anything into the HDMI port to keep the passengers entertained might be something that will sway you to go with the Terra. And I completely understand that. If you're looking for something that feels more like, like a bear hug, a little bit more secure because of the darker liner and the smaller windows, then the Fortuner will be your choice. Now, when we get to the business end of the Terra, oh yeah, I gotta show you this. Uh, the bottle of Jack actually does fit in the Terra up front. There's enough space for that, no problems there. In the center, not so much, so I'm gonna put that back there. But anyway, if we, when we get to the business end of the Terra, it's nice to see that there has been an evolution, so to speak. Uh, everything has grown up, gotten a little bit better, um, has gotten more user-friendly in the sense that in the past, the around view monitor or the rear camera was on the rear view mirror. Now it's actually a mirror and a screen at the same time because there's a camera at the rear. So you don't have any, you don't have an impeded view of the rear. So that's evolved. The screen in the center used to be much smaller. Now it's a nine inch screen. Plus it's, uh, it's got Android and Apple capability. It's got Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. Then you've got stuff like wireless charging. Sure, yes, it still has some piano blacks found here and whatnot, but really at least there was, like I said, it evolved and it does look so much better. And the contrast leather here from the black and, and the dark red or the brown, I'm, I'm colorblind, I'm not really sure what that is, but I think it's red. And then the, the texture found here right underneath, the evolution of it is is very nice and it, it just goes to show that the car actually has matured ever so slightly in a good way. It doesn't look like, like the way Jack teases me that I'm a boomer. No, nothing. You know you do, Jack. But no, so it, it doesn't it doesn't come off as all of a sudden it's old and decrepit, like decrepit. <laughs> like the way Jack describes certain parts of my body. What the and but so the 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 great thing is is that it, it has kept up with the times and it looks new and I like it. It looks it does look premium. Plus also there is a Bose sound system in here, which by the way we'll get to a little bit later because Jack has something up his sleeve. What I have no idea. But before we do, let's head on over to the Fortuner. Now in the Fortuner, oh by the way, Jack's container fits easily inside. Anyway, so what am I saying? Inside the Fortuner, much like uh, the fact that the third row still folds down and up, there are a few changes inside the interior, and then there are some that have still retained the same. Like for instance, the very high dashboard of the Fortuner and the smaller windows and, and the dark headliner, that's something that uh, has maintained the, the same all throughout, which is, it can be a good thing too, because other people will find it as a, a familiar thing, something that they're used to. Uh, inside, you've got a smaller screen than that of the Terra. This is a seven inch, rather an eight inch. Thank you, Jack. It is an eight inch compared to a nine inch in the other side. There's a lot more piano black plastics here. You do also have a wireless charging port here. But I, what I like about is that uh, there are less piano black plastics here. It's got a nice full uh, wood going on. You have a manual parking brake instead of an electronic parking brake. 
also, uh, Toyota Safety Sense inside this automobile is a bit more extensive than Nissan Intelligent Mobility inside the top of the line Terra. In the sense that here, I've got uh, lane keep assist and adaptive cruise, whereas in the Terra, you don't. It's the same when it comes to uh, around view monitors. Yes, it's just that in that sense, there's a little bit more tech in the Toyota that. But again, in, in other sense also, there's more tech inside the Terra because the rear view monitor is actually also can tra transform into a camera, right? You've got transform. a camera transform or revert to. You know, I was happy with transform, Jack. Anyway, it can become uh, a monitor because of the camera at the rear. Whereas here, you just have, just have an auto dimming mirror. As much as I would like to start the engine yet again and go out for a drive to tell you what the power feels like and the suspension feels like and the differences between the two, Jack wants to do a taste test of the sound systems of each automobile. See, in here, you've got a JBL system. Inside the Terra, you've got a Bose system. How we're gonna test that exactly, I don't know exactly what Jack has up his sleeve. The only clue that he'll give me is Meow, meow. Seriously, dude, what the hell does that mean? So I'll do a little spin so I get a little confused. Oh my gosh, I'm a little dizzy. So the point of all of this is, is that you're gonna walk me to the car. I'm not gonna know which car it is. You're gonna, I'm leaning to the left, man, I'm so dizzy. Uh, I, we're gonna go inside an automobile. Uh, I refuse to touch the steering wheel or anything like that to let, any, let me know what that automobile might be so that we can do a blind Taste test, is that it? Blind sound here, test. sound test of the automobiles. Lift my foot, okay. okay. Uh, uh, I'm not touching anything at all. Like, I'll give you my honest opinion on how it feels or rather how it sounds, if it sounds whole, if it sounds lacking. I like a lot of bass every once in a while, so I'm gonna let you know if the bass sounds good or not. Kick in the bass. Okay, the bass, feels like it's very well distributed. Um, it doesn't sound like there's an echo in the cabin. The hi-hats are pretty clear. The mids are good. Overall, it's a, it's a good experience. And it doesn't sound like it's, it's peaking or, or, or cracking at all. Sounds, sounds okay. Can't complain about that experience, it was pretty darn good. Uh, they're both premium sound systems, so I really won't know what the difference is between this, whatever it is that I'm listening to, as until I sit in the next automobile to, find, to try and figure out the differences. So let's do that right now, shall we? I'm going to fall. I'm going to fall. You know, when you spin with your eyes open, completely different than when you do it with your eyes closed, that's not fun. I feel like I'm gonna hit something. I know what the first system sounds like. I have a basis for it. Now the second and... Okay. Immediately, I'm thinking it's not as powerful. This is just the electronic portion of it. Wait for the bass to kick in and then the hi-hat. They're similar. They're very similar, but it just feels like the bass might be a bit stronger here. It just feels, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it feels like it's a little bit more robust inside this automobile. Like the bass has has more of a, a thump to it than a whomp. Now the whomp is obviously very nice because instead of it being uh, forced in you, it like goes around the cabin kind of a thing. Or this, like, um, like a thump. A, a womp is sort of like it's more surround. A thump is more of like more direct. So in here it feels like it's a little bit more uh, direct. Maybe because I'm closer to the speaker, I have no idea. The cabin is roughly the same as well. Which one do I like better? I think they're really quite similar. Okay, so which one was which? Which was the first one and which was the second one? The first one was the JBL in the Fortune. The second was the Bose with the Terra. Okay, so this was the first and this was the second. Yeah, okay, so my, 
experience really was that this was more of a, a more mature sounding uh, system, which is odd because it actually looked younger on the outside. Whereas this, the sound system was felt like it was younger, which is again odd because it looks more mature on the outside. If I had to choose, and this is odd for me because I'm more of a Bose person because I've been, I guess, a little bit more loyal to that brand. The truth is I actually enjoyed the sound system inside the Fortuner just ever so slightly better, but that ever so slightly works. Now, can we please go for a drive? <laughs> Thank goodness. Where are my glasses? Let's start immediately with the hill test. Now, what I'm going to do is bring the car to a complete stop, not right now, but eventually bring the car to a complete stop at a certain portion where it is uphill and then I'm going to floor it just to see how quick the response is and what the power feels like inside the Fortuner, which obviously has a larger engine than that of the Terra. Let's start immediately with the hill test. I'm going to stop the automobile in the same area that I will eventually with the Terra to find out just exactly what the power difference is between the Fortuner and the Terra. So we're now at the hill. I'm gonna to come to a complete stop. Don't worry, no one's behind me. In three, two, one, let's go. Okay, it picks up pretty well. Not too much noise and it gets going. It gets going very, very well as you'd expect. I mean, it is, after all, a car with 400 Newton meters of torque. Uh, so 500. the 500, sorry, 500 Newton meters of torque. Thank you very much, Jack. The one thing that you will notice uh, inside the Fortuner, and I know this because earlier I was able to drive the, the Terra, is that the Fortuner definitely feels more robust in the sense that uh, it is a little bit bouncier. Uh, it does give you that very much of an, uh, an SUV feel to it. But when you put the power down, much like the Hilux, the power is there immediately. And the Fortuner also has a trick up its sleeve, something that the Terra does not, which is a power mode or a sport mode, which definitely, oh yeah, livens up the engine by quite a lot. Whoa, this thing pulls, man. Oh, this is a lot of fun. Why didn't we ever do this before? But again, the ride quality, that's something that I guess it's to be desired. It's an acquired taste, so to speak, because inside the Fortuner, unlike other SUVs, it definitely is a bit more robust. Like for instance, we actually don't have a full capacity car at the moment. There's only three of us inside the automobile. I'm sure it would do better if it were much heavier, but as of the moment, and I'm only traveling 40 kilometers per hour on a specific patch of road near Tagaytay, it's just, well, you really can feel the road. The response to the steering wheel and to the suspension and how you're bouncing around is very apparent. This time around inside the Terra, same hill, same test. Let's see what it feels like. Again, no one behind me. Same load inside the car. Three, two, one. Power feels almost the same, but you can't deny that the Fortuner definitely has a lot more of it. I mean, like a lot more, 50 more uh, Newton meters of torque and X more amount more of horsepower. The difference, I gotta tell you, the pickup and the feel of the automobile when driving is really night and day. That is for sure. What's also night and day, this time in the favor of the Terra, is that the ride is most definitely much, much smoother. I mean, in the Fortuner where you feel that it's very, very robust, in here, I hate to say Jack's right, but it is maybe a little bit older, a little bit more mature because, well, I may want the utility and the practicality of a ladder platform, which is what you will find in the, uh, excuse me, in the Navara. But if you put it on the Terra, I want something a little softer. And that's exactly what it is. It's just much more mature, it's calmer, I'm more relaxed inside this automobile. So I guess that's the trade-off. 
at the end of the day, really, it's what it is that you want to live with. Do you need more torque? A little bit more robust, but do you need that torque because you're going to be loading the car with a lot of A, either cargo or B, passengers in it? Or can you live with a little less torque, but a much better ride? The answer? This, of course, would not be a complete comparo until I tell you what my preference is between the Fortuner and the Terra. And to be completely honest, my preference would, yes, be the Terra. Reasons? Well, it is a much smoother ride. It isn't as robust. I'm looking for something, I guess, a little closer to my age, a little calmer. Then there's the fact that I do love the tech inside, the look and feel of the interior. And plus, it's undeniable that you can load much more cargo in here when you fold the seats. There's also the fact that it's much more affordable. That is not, however, to say that the Fortuner will not have its own following, so to speak, because for reasons such as it's much more powerful under the hood, the response of the throttle is just immediately there. It feels like it's on tiptoes all the whole time, and yet it's very much a tank at the same time. It's very sporty on the outside. Uh, it's got a power tail door. Now, sure, cargo is down, but the biggest thing about Toyota is the fact that this is the Philippines, and they are the undisputed king when it comes to resale. But when all is said and done, after you've done all your research, the choice will still most definitely come to you. I hope, however, that our little comparo here has helped you in any way figure out that much closer to, you know, which particular car you're going to get. If and when you're ready to get an automobile, head on over to autodeal.com.ph and use the Get Quote button because it is absolutely free. Now, with that being said, you guys know what my preference is. Let me know in the comments, what's yours?